Thank you for joining us on American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Bromell, joined by my friend Ethan Euchre. Glad to be here. And Jeff Wagstaff. Hello, everyone. Thanks and, for having me. Absolutely. And world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Benatti. Thank you for sharing your time with us. Thank you. So joining us right now is John Aldridge, a lobster fisherman near Long Island, New York, whose harrowing search and rescue mission at sea is chronicled in the new book, which is soon to be a major motion picture, A Speck in the Sea, a story of survival and rescue. Thanks for joining us, John. Thank you for having me. Pretty incredible story, John. Take us back to that night in 2013 when you were swept overboard. It's a nine-hour ride out to our fishing ground. So we have uh, three guys on the boat. One guy stays awake and we rotate through the night. I was on watch. I was getting the boat ready to fish for the next day, and as I was moving a cooler on the deck to get to one of my tanks to do Mm -hmm. just one of my valves, I pulled on the handle, and the handle had snapped, and I went flying out of the back of the boat in the middle of the night, about 2 o'clock in the morning. What time of year, John? It was July. The water temperature was about 71 degrees. So at least the water wasn't too bad. So uh, obviously you didn't have on a life vest? No, I did not have a life vest on. I had uh, fishing boots, a pair of shorts, and a T-shirt. Wow. So explain to everyone, how did you stay afloat? Because you must have been not for a loop when now you're in the water and you're thinking, I'm the only person awake on the boat. And the boat was continued on. How do I stay afloat? the boat's on autopilot. I was panicking and basically, you know, I exhausted myself because of panic and fear. Right. I was about to drown. I, for lack of anything better to grab, I kicked my boots off and they floated up and I got another breath out of myself and something clicked in my head and said, let me empty these boots out and create an air pocket. So I emptied the boot and pushed it back into the water. I had a makeshift life jacket, be, you know. And your uh, crewmates didn't even realize until the morning, wow. obviously, like at least hours three, three, four hours later yeah. that you were missing. What was, I mean, what was their reaction when they fi- uh, figured out that you weren't on the ship. Yeah, so my fishing partner, Anthony, he wakes up and I'm not on the boat. It's pure disbelief, you know. I mean, we've done this trip a thousand times. You're just so blown away by it. He was 60 miles offshore by the time he woke up. Wow. And I fell in about 40 miles. So he wakes up and immediately calls the Coast Guard and tells him what happened. Did the fishing boat then mm-hmm. circle around and try to... Backtrack. Follow its backtrack to see if they could find you, or what was there? Right. What did they do? Right, he turned the boat right around, went back down. It's you know the same track line that we came out on, but you know the ocean moves. Mm. Even if the boat <laughs> went from one point A to point B, the current in between moves that whole body of water. I can't imagine the panic you must have been going through because right away I think being in the water outside of a pool and I automatically go sharks I I would die yeah so about I guess an hour and a half after I realized I could float on my boots I was starting to assess the situation and here comes two shark fins I see come up around me about 15 feet away from me and pull out my little three inch pocket knife thinking that's going to do something Mm -hmm. (laughs) and uh I hold tight, and I'm, you know, scared, scared to death. Something, you know, again, clicked in me. I, I got to calm my heart rate. I got to calm my breathing down so that they won't come check me out. And Just can't imagine how <laughs> scary that's got to be. You know, middle of the ocean, middle of the night, you see fins come up around you. Yeah. That, that, that's crazy. Wow. You got dive bombed by birds and things, too, didn't you? It wasn't just <laughs> yeah, sharks I mean, that were imme- pestering you. Immediately as I hit the water, these storm petrels started dive bombing my head. It seemed like everything in the ocean knew I was there. You know, porpoise swim by. I had uh, ocean sunfish swim right up to me. I had to kick them off of me. That's a 500-pound fish. Mm-hmm. When this fin came up, you know, I thought it was a great white shark or something. It was mm-hmm. huge. You talk about you know, going inside your head and trying to picture something. What was that item that you were picturing during this time to try to calm yourself down? You try to get in your head, but out of your head. Okay. You know, you try to get in your head and try to calm yourself down, but you try, you, you, it's like you're almost looking out above yourself, looking down at yourself. You know, you want to calm yourself down and, and just like a mantra of it, of it, okay. just calm down, you know, breathe slow, mm-hmm. you know, and, and just work through it that way. In some of the uh, write-ups about your experience, didn't you picture, what was it, a vacuum? Vacuum cleaner. You know, all of these thoughts go through your head. You know, who's going to take care of my dog? You know, the vacuum cleaner. Or I left out on the on the deck overnight. Is it going to rain? You know, like all of these obscure right. things you think about that just blow mm-hmm. through your brain. And is what occupies you your mind. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. John, it sounds like you were in the water quite a while. Mm-hmm. Take us up to what your thought process was, and eventually we're talking to you. Mm-hmm. So somebody had to find you. you Tell lived. us what yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
seen them searching for me. In the morning, I, I knew when, when Anthony woke up, I heard the helicopters in the distance. So I knew that they were awake, and they called the Coast Guard, and the Coast Guard was out looking for me. Through the day, you know, my boat had passed me twice. Another lobster boat had passed me uh, wow. twice. How close the did, they, did they get to you, John? Because uh, that had maybe, to have been so frustrating. Maybe, maybe like 300 yards or something like that, you know. <sighs> and they couldn't see me. Yelling, screaming, nothing. God. I read in some of the prep work that Ethan pulls prior to us talking mm-hmm. to a guest that eventually you found a buoy to cling to. That had to be a like an angel. You know, I knew the area we were fishing in. I knew there was fishing gear in the area. So mm-hmm. that was, I figured, my salvation. Let me find a buoy. So I find the buoy, and I realize it's like holding a balloon. I can't get on top of it. If it was all I had, it would be enough to stay afloat, but it wasn't right. better than my boots. Okay. Um, so what I did is it turned into more of a, a visible thing. You know, so I, I, could, I cut it off. There's more visibility. I swam more in the direction of where they were searching for me. I just had to get more closer to where I thought that they would be looking for me. Eventually found another buoy and tied the two of them together and sat in between them. Mm. Wow, and uh, that's how they found you. Yeah, tell us about that moment that you were finally found, John. Yeah, you know, I'm sitting there another couple of hours figuring it's getting dark out. I'm watching the sun, you know, drop in the, in the sky or through the day, and I didn't want to be in the open ocean again through the night. All of a sudden, here comes the Coast Guard helicopter, right down the line of buoys and then i started waving and screaming and throwing the stuff in the air and uh he spun up off of me was hovering there and i knew he had seen me at that point so i had turned my back to them they had lowered down the rescue swimmer he had swam over to me and wow you know he was out of he was in such disbelief that he, they found me and he said we you know we've been looking for you for nine hours today and that's when i told him i've been looking for you for 12 hours <laughs> i think you had a long day try being yeah. me oh my gosh so what type of parting advice would you have for someone that's on these type of boats so they don't end up in your situation are there well, any survival techniques that you can bestow uh, upon them? Well, I mean, complacency kills. So, you know, don't be complacent and right. you won't be in that situation, for one. And, you know, life jacket. You know, you got to wear your life jacket. I'm a professional mariner and, you know, we haven't been doing that. And now it's, you know, how can you not do it? Didn't your partner realize kind of the time frame? At first he didn't. And then he realized that you said you were going to meet or do something at around 3 in the morning, and that's what helped them kind of narrow the search area for you? When he had realized that the handle on the cooler was you know, on the deck, that, I, right. that that is the reason why it had fallen overboard. Wow. It, it, it was broken, and he picked it up. Mm-hmm. And he remembered that when we hit a certain point, this 40-fathom edge, we were going to start filling the tanks up. So... Mm-hmm. If I was going to fill the tanks, it would be around then, so I must have fallen off, you know, in that that area. That helped a lot. That helped a lot getting the uh, Coast Guard not looking, you know, in a block of 20 miles that I really wasn't in. Right. Now, John, I understand they're making your story into a film. Do you know Mm -hmm. any details about it? Who's going to play you? Anything like that? Any preferences? Because, you know, I'm I'm up for the gig. I'll take it. (laughs) Yeah, so am I, right? (laughs) But I don't think we're marketable enough. (laughs) Yeah, probably not. Nobody knows who I am. (laughs) <laughs> Me either. So they're they're hot and heavy on it now. Blumhouse Productions. That's a big has control big of it studio. now. It's gonna be somebody very famous. So. I'm sure <laughs> they just haven't told me yet cool well we can say when it comes out that we yes. talk to the actual guy in the yes. movie so that's, that's exciting right. thank god you're still here mm-hmm. yes yeah uh, well for thank sure. you for sharing such an important story with us john aldridge lobster fisherman near long island new york whose harrowing search and rescue mission at sea is chronicled in the new book which is soon to be a major motion picture mm-hmm. a speck in the sea a story of survival and rescue thanks john thank you wow thank you for having me have a great Absolutely. weekend what Bye-bye. an incredible story